everybody. It's Saturday. It's a mic talk. It's Song and Sword. Glad you guys are with me. Thank you guys for all your prayers, your support, your encouragement. These last uh, several weeks have been just awesome as we've moved into our new building. I want to remind you tomorrow, we're going to be there at 9 and 1030, worshiping the Lord, uh, taking communion together, um, praying together, and um, of course, teaching the Word of God. Tomorrow, we're talking about the house of the Lord being a house of prayer for all people, for all people. Would you invite some all people for tomorrow? Would you be there at 9 and 1030? And uh, if they have kids, bring them at 9 because we have awesome children's programming for them. Uh, we'd love to see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is the Lord's Day. And uh, I, along with David, am glad when they say to us, let's go to the house of the Lord. So I hope to see you there. If not, uh, be here tomorrow and I will, the same YouTube channel, and we will uh, preach a sermon for you that will hopefully inspire you. Uh, text prayer to that number on the screen because we want to pray with you and stand with you in prayer. Uh, many, many prayers this week going up uh, before the Lord on your behalf. So uh, thank you. And pray with us today at 149. Um, 149 is from Psalm 149, and so we've kind of marked 149 every day as a time of prayer for us. Keep praying. God is doing some amazing things uh, through the ministry, and he's really uh, blessed this pastor beyond what you can imagine. So I'm thankful and grateful. Israel spent the night last night, so I'm trying to be up, uh, quiet up here while he uh, wakes, and uh, then we'll go play and take him home at some point. I'm going to give you a very simple teaching today. It's another one-liner. It's from James chapter 4, verse 7. Actually, it's only half of the verse. I'll read the whole verse, and then I'll give you the focus for the day to get you through uh, this Saturday. Um, James 4, 7 says this, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We're going to focus on that last part there. James 4, 7, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, the, the, the devil is very evil and very powerful, but not very smart. He's not really changed anything the way he approaches huma humanity uh, since he approached Adam and Eve in the garden. Satan, his word, his, the, the, I'm sorry, I'm going to start with the devil. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The word devil, diabolos, is the word that means um, uh, to slander. Jesus identifies him as a liar. So uh, you, can, you can get by his name, he's a liar. He's going to slander, especially he's going to lie to you about you. And then his other word, uh, his other name, uh, Satan, Satanas, uh, that word means accuser. <clears throat> Excuse me, he's going to accuse you. And those are the two things that Satan does. Uh, Satan is going to, uh, the devil, uh, is going to um, lie to you about who you are. Remember he said to Eve in the garden, you can be like God's. You can do whatever you want. God knows that. F fulfill your appetite. Eat this. Eat this fruit that he said you can't have. Break all the rules God says that you, can, you, you can't do. Um, enjoy what God says that is bad for you. Uh, in other words, sin. God has given you all these rules. He's not telling the truth. Sin. So Satan, the devil, he is going to uh, lie about who you are. And then he, when that doesn't work, he's going to accuse you. He's going to question um, your uh, lovability. He's going to question whether you're worthy of God's love. And um, that's, that's the ploy of Satan and the devil. And so James comes along and says, how, how do we, uh, you know, First Peter, by the way, uh, describes um, the devil and Satan as the roaring lion seeking whom he may, may devour. And he says in First Peter uh, 5, 9, Again, he says, resist. How do we resist the devil? How do we resist the devil? Well, um, and, and, and here's the, the, the word today from the Lord is, if you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. How do you resist him? Number one, you don't listen to what he says about you, right? You don't listen to the accusations he makes about who you are. You're no good. You're not going to make it. This is too scary. Um, God doesn't love you. God's not right. The Bible is not right. The church is not right. Satan's going to come and lie to you about you. He is going to, um, he's going to accuse you to God for being not that great. And then he's just going to, um, he's going to deceive you um, about all things God and all things in this life. So again, those two things are really closely related. 
One is he's just a liar. He's going to lie about everything. And number two, he's going to accuse you of not being worthy of God's love. How do I resist that? Well, one of the best ways to resist that is to simply state to God, when you feel tempted, when you feel like you want to indulge in all the stuff that God says you shouldn't do, or when you feel fearful, or when you feel lonely, or down, or alone, it's a simple prayer. Just pray to God. God, I sense Satan's battle against me. Help me resist. Resist just means to put up, just, to, just say, nope, that's not true. And um, I, 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 don't, I don't advise talking to the devil. Some people like to say, Satan, in Jesus' name, get out of here. That's fine. I just, go, I just go right to the source. Jesus, get him out of here. I sense his temptation. I sense his lies. I sense his destructive nature in my life. And uh, all I have to know about Satan is that his goal is to get me to die. That's what he did with Adam and Eve. If they just eat this fruit of the tree, uh, the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, then God said that they will die. So if I get them to eat, they're going to die. And Satan goes about my world and my life and your world and your life trying to get us to do the stuff that we don't, um, that God tells us not to do, um, and trying to get us to believe who we really are not. You are not who Satan says you are, and you cannot do what Satan says you can do. The best thing is to resist, and by resisting, I just simply say, Jesus, help me. Satan's lying to me about me. He's lying to me about my world. And then see if the, if the temptation and, the, and the, the prowling lion doesn't just kind of retreat. It doesn't mean he won't be back. Remember one of the scariest passages in the Bible after um, Jesus withstood the temptation in the wilderness. The Bible says um, Satan left him until a more opportune time. That means Satan came back to tempt Jesus. Satan's going to come back to tempt me. But there is a truth in the scripture that we get from James 4, 7 today. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He's, uh, he's mean. He's a roaring lion. He wants to devour us. But his tactics are pretty simple. And God, through the power of the Holy Spirit and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, has given us a way to resist. Pretty deep stuff on a Saturday. I hope Satan stays far from you today, but I know his tactics. So resist the devil. He will flee from you. Love you all.